In this video, we will add presets and preset variations to the flower. So what are presets? Presets allow you to store different configurations of a plant within a single plant model. For example, you could create a tree with seasonal presets where the leaves in each preset look different according to the season. And you don't need to save four different models to your hard drive. It's all integrated within a single file. Once you've created different presets, you can then switch between them in Plant Factory and quickly load a pre-made configuration for export. When you load a plant with presets in view, you can select the type of preset you want to use. For our flower, we'll create two presets, one with just a single flower and one with a group of flowers. So let's get started. First, we need to create a group of flowers. We need a node that adds more instances of the flower into the scene. We can use the Hydra node for that, which distributes instances in a circle. Let's select the root node in the graph and then click the Hydra icon so that the node is automatically connected to the root node. Next, let's connect the stalk to the Hydra node and we end up with a group of flowers. I want to have less flowers, so I'll reduce the number to 5 plus minus 1. The flowers are also too close together, so we need to increase the radius to something around 10 or 11 centimeters. When we look at the bottom of the stalk, we see that it curves towards the ground. This happens because the first growth angle of the instances in the Hydra node is zero degrees, which means that the plant would theoretically lie flat on the ground. But due to the tropism setting in the stalk node, the stalk is pulled straight upwards nonetheless, which looks quite strange. So let's increase the growth angle to 80 plus minus 10, so that the flowers grow relatively straight upwards now, while maintaining just a little bit of tropism curvature. And let's also add some random rotation around each instance by entering a variation of 360 degrees. To create a preset, we need to build a custom interface with these settings that we want to change in each preset. This is known as publishing parameters and some of you might know this from view from the function editor. So we want to create a preset that has just a single flower and another preset that has multiple flowers. If you look closely at the group, you can spot a single flower in the middle even though the Hydra node only distributes instances along a circle. And this single flower in the middle is the one that we've been working with all the time in the past videos. When we look at the graph, we'll see that both the Hydra node and the stalk node are connected to the root. So we're producing a single flower with the stalk node and a group of flowers around the single flower with the Hydra node. So essentially, we need to publish this number parameter so that we can create a preset with zero instances in the Hydra node, which will leave us with a single flower in the middle, or with five plus minus one instances, which will create a group of flowers for the other preset. However, publishing a number is not an elegant solution, as you would have to manually enter the correct value into the slider each and every time. On the other hand, having a checkbox that we could click to switch between a single flower and multiple flowers would be a lot nicer to use, so let's create one. The node that creates a checkbox is the boolean number node in the constant category. Depending on whether it is checked or not, it outputs a value of either minus one or one. We needed to output a value from zero to one though, and you'll see why in just a minute. So let's add a filter, map filter to the graph and connect it to the Boolean number. The filter already has the right settings, which turn the value of minus one into a value of zero. 
So now the checkbox outputs 0 when it is unchecked and 1 when it is checked. Next, we need to switch between a value of 0 for 0 instances and a value of 5 plus minus 1 for multiple instances. Let's add a constant constant number to the scene, which already has a value of 0. For our other value with the variation, we need a miscellaneous random range node. This is the same slider that we have in all the other geometry nodes in Plan Factory, so let's enter 5 plus minus 1 into the fields. Now, to switch between both options, we need a combiner blender node. Usually, the blender node blends between two inputs according to the slider in the middle. If the slider is set to 0, only the first input is used, and if the slider is set all the way to 1, only the second input is used. Anything in between is a mix of the two inputs. So we can replace the slider with the checkbox that we created. And that's the reason why we needed the checkbox to output values from 0 to 1. So let's unfold the node and connect the constant number of 0 to input 0 and the random range to input 1 and the map filter to the ratio. Finally, we need to unfold the Hydra node and connect the blender to the number input in the node so that we now control the number of instances in the Hydra node with the setup of nodes that we just created. When we now use the checkbox, the blender node either fully uses input 0 which is 0 instances, or input 1, which is the random range node with 5 plus minus 1 instances. And that's way more elegant than using and publishing the original slider. Let's now click on the word value next to the checkbox and choose publish parameter. In this dialog, we can give this setting a name. I'll call this multiple flowers. We also need to check Allow External Access to make the setting accessible when we use the plant in view. Else, the setting will only be accessible when you edit the plant in Plant Factory. Since we don't plan to publish any more settings, we do not need to give this a group name, so let's click OK. Now we're ready to create the two presets. When a preset is created, Plant Factory takes a screenshot of the 3D view. So let's hide the information in the 3D view or it will turn up on the snapshot. Let's go to the Presets tab and we can see the checkbox that we just published. Because we don't have any presets yet, the Custom preset is already pre-selected in the drop-down menu. Let's make sure that the checkbox is unchecked and then we can click the camera icon which will create a new preset from the current plan state and take the snapshot of the 3D view. I'll call this preset single flower. With the icon on the right, we can optionally enter a description for the preset, which will show up in the view content browser, but I'll leave this empty for now and click the save icon. Next, let's switch back to the custom preset, click the checkbox so that we have multiple flowers, and again create a new preset. And this one is the multiple flowers preset. And we'll click save again. And that's it. Now we have both presets available in the drop down menu and they will appear in view when we load the plant from the content browser. One final feature that we'll add to the plant are preset variations. If you have a random plant variation that you like in particular, you can store this variation within the plant and then access it in view as well. Despite the name, this feature works also in plants that have no preset setup. 
So let's select the single flower preset and create a new variation. When we now click on the star icon, this particular variation will be saved in the plant model. So let's add some more variations and save them with the star icon. Once we are satisfied with the number of variations, we can do a right click on the icon and we'll get a list of all the favorite variations that we just saved and we can also replace the snapshot that Plant Factory took with a custom picture or we can also delete a variation that we want to get rid of. We could also repeat this process for the second preset with multiple flowers, but I'll leave that preset the way it is. So in the next and final video for the flower project, we will export the flower to view and look at the integration between both programs.